What's going on guys? It's your boy Jerry Blaze bringing another Pokemon video and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my reaction of the Paradox Pokemon Battle Royale Explained. And I can't thank you guys enough for the support that you guys showed on the, re on the reaction video of the Battle Royale itself. And you guys told me to go and check this out. So thank you guys so much for the love and support. And I'm super freaking pumped to actually see how they came to the conclusion of the previous battle of the battle royale video if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out but spoiler alert i want to know how the hell they came to the conclusion of fluttermane winning this because the way they did it was so epic and so interesting i want to see how they came up with the concepts and ideas of certain pokemon and certain matchups and certain jokes that were made like bro and that's another thing too you guys told me that it like in the comment section you guys told me that i should have had like the com or the uh the captions on because there were certain jokes and certain nods and certain things that i didn't i probably wouldn't have caught if i didn't have it on um you guys also asked me to like, i'm just going to address this really quickly you guys also asked me to react to uh pokemon horizons you guys wanted me to react to the first episode uh unfortunately while i would like to do that i can't because the like guys i don't want to be hella i don't i don't want to be copyright trick okay i don't want a copyright strike and i don't know how to be able to do that without the video being available worldwide or being taken down so if you guys know how i can do that if you guys know anyone that knows how to do that or reacts to anime and stuff like that send them my way or let me know in the comment section down below message me on discord or whatever just let me know because i would really love to record uh record a video where i react to that and not only that where i react to anime in general on the channel or on my second channel or anything did you know i had a second channel you can check it out in the description down below uh my third channel is coming as well by the way we are going to be doing vods over there and this summer sometime within the next week we will be having videos going up on my second channel so check them out subscribe while you're here and yeah speaking of subscribing if you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys go on to enjoy the content we're putting out make sure you hit that like button make sure you share it out with your family and friends and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new because it's greatly appreciated and i will love you for it and remember we're on the road 10k subs by the end of the year and with your help i know do it and we hit the goal i'll be down my hair pink ombre pink and getting myself my very first tattoo so if that's something you want to see make sure you get that notification bell on join my discord server and you follow me on all of my socials all those links are in the description down below and with that said let's go ahead and dive into the paradox pokemon battle royale explain yeah is all oh i'm so ready lost. And oh oh before we jump before we go too far into it, i really want to really quickly give a shout out to loxton and noggin for creating this video and because they worked hand in hand with terminal montage with um with their initial video so be sure to go subscribe to uh, uh loxton and noggin as well as terminal montage all right guys please future doesn't exist all we can truly do is embrace the gift Master that is now that is why it is called the present that's what i'd say if i wanted to sound profound but hey <laughs> if we got oh let's say dude it sounds like master uwe right now closed space say blueberry academy and then had them fight battle royale okay. style so i do i do i want to point this out okay so i have not played the dlc or scarlet and violet i kind of assumed we were at blueberry academy just because of the layout of everything but i have yet to play the dlc for scarlet and violet i do plan on playing it please don't roast me in the comment section too hard but i do plan on playing it at some point and getting it I just don't have it don't i haven't had the chance to get it so why did i say that you guys didn't know that why did i out myself like <laughs> Who would last the longest? I don't know why. Who would be the most sometimes. likely to win and why? Ooh. Well, I helped write the Paradox Pokemon Battle Royale. Ooh, okay, I like the, the background Terminal music. Montage channel, and in this video, I'm going to explain some of what happened in said battle and then explain why the winners are who they are. I'm very, I'm very interested in seeing who, like, okay. how they came to that conclusion. I love the SpongeBob transition. So remember, while Area Zero is the center of Paradox and Terrestrialization shenanigans, yeah. the core up in Blueberry Academy is made of the same crystal dirt stuff from there. That's uh -huh. why you can 
still terastalized there. We took a okay, I didn't know, like I didn't know anything about that because so I haven't played the Cox DLC. Paradox Pokemon here, all in Master Balls because that's what they're all in. So Violet's future Paradox Pokemon are all various types of robots, droids, yeah. androids, cyborgs, xenobots, autonomous vehicles, etc. More details in our video explaining all of their lore here. But we had there's more. There's more. Oh my, yo, are we watching those too? Let me know, are we watching those too? Dude, I'm down. Oh my God, there's more? Fun with this referentially and made the adorable and tiny Iron Moth a turret from Portal as Iron Moth is able to shoot its feet forward like bullets and also it's tiny. Iron Bundle, who honestly is already pretty comic reliefy thanks to its whole concept, mannerisms, and animations, is a Roger, Star Roger. Wars battle droid. Iron this Threads is so is funny. Windows PC and a Roomba, or maybe that vacuum from Teletubbies. Iron Judge <laughs> is seen hiding in a cave and looking out, making it appear as a silhouette, and thus with its two puppet looking hands, reference is the Mystery Science Theater 3000 trio. Oh! The I get it! I remember Air watching Sun. that. Fluttermane and Roaring Moon are both past Paradox Pokemon from millions upon millions of years ago. But now here comes Iron Thorns, who's just a Mecha Kaiju, a Mecha Godzilla, a Mecha yeah. Emular. Jugulus insults Thorns. So this is really cool, dude. I like the research they did. Jugulus launches its puppety hand heads at Thorns' face, which it is known to do. Automated combat. Coridon and Great Tusk land with a large. Yo, this is so freaking cool. A dinosaur roar. You'll notice in this fight, none of the past paradoxes speak while the futures do plenty. I mean, yeah. Caveman didn't speak the same way that we think of speech these days. Brute Bonnet, Unga Bunga's about and is the battle's first fatality. The competitive and aggressive Coridon saw its stupid face as an easy target. Though Bonnet explodes into poisonous spores and tusks. <laughs> Not the smartest move, Coridon. It essentially just hurt itself, which is pretty in line with what it does. That's so, so cool, dude. To be the Wait, fatality. no. Maybe that, that's so sick. Be. That's so sick that they that they base all of like a lot of the things off of like what their trading card does like that's so freaking sick bro yo so i i love that paradox pokemon that's also very rarely used in the meta and has very few type or lore advantages over the other paradoxes yeah raging bolt pops out of the water as that's where it likes to hang and when sandy shocks does it out, they don't immediately fight they have a sparky electric type connection and sandy shocks happily hops into the water with raging bolt not realizing how deep it is bolt's neck is long the two volcarona paradoxes are fighting the fighting type slither wing is particularly combative while iron moth the extraterrestrial observational satellite tries to avoid combat this is it can. oh it's i love body, it less than a third the size of Slitherwings makes dodging Slitherwings punches and kicks easy. I forgot Slitherwing was a fighting type, by Eventually, the way. Slitherwing uses its wings to double jump and slam down into the ground to release numerous spores into the air, obscuring- Wait, why, why is the spores there, there, though? And allowing Slither to get a good kick in, sending Ooh. Moth straight into the Terrarium's glass dome. Uh oh. So Roaring Moon and Fluttermane are fighting. Roaring Moon is extremely aggressive and violent, being essentially an ancient mega salamence, while Fluttermane yeah. is a small and tricky ghost, vanishing to avoid Moon's attacks. Soon, Fluttermane fades away completely and hides behind Iron Thorns, who's currently eating the remains of What the fuck, bro? Moon to attack and destroy Thorns to get to Fluttermane. But Thorns' ripped out thorns explode in Moon's hands. Bonus fun fact some military are already in research and development for military robots that feed on other robots and corpses to recharge and repair themselves on the field. Is that real? What the fuck? The future is fun. And now? So a lot of dinosaur media is in documentary format, right? So we have a few lines from David Attenborough's Prehistoric Planet series narrating over Scream Tale. Though while the lines oh. after the first one are all from That's actually really cool. Initially, the actual voice in the battle is me. 
doing my best impression and put you did a really good job a plethora of filters while just a head cannony theory there are some suggestions that iron leaves is the steed of iron valiant though i can believe it good one compared to the other future paradoxes they both move very animatronically stiff but based on the violet book and pokedex iron valiant is a cruel robot built by a mad scientist who cuts down others without hesitation so we made it observe its surroundings wow. like the terminator which is doubly fitting as it's chasing Screamtail down and thus referencing this older meme format. Now, Scream <laughs> Tail's tiny little Yo, this is actually really cool. The amount of recent Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. It, I can't Majin believe it got boo. me again. This causes Iron Valiant sensors to go haywire. It got me again. Be defeated. The so amount of research that went into this is so good. Crack even more. But Iron Hands is fun, right? A cyborg sumo wrestler with floating hands. It tries to use those hands to stop Great Tusk from charging at it, but in being electric hands and so, Tusk so they're probably gonna say something different. But the way I saw Iron Hands was like a uh, guard armor from Kingdom Hearts One. That's how I saw uh, uh, their portrayal of Iron Hands. I saw it as I saw it as guard tied, armor. Tusk doesn't care. Iron Hands flees and passes through several walls, which it's prone to do, apparently. But Tusk what the fuck? is quite weak to ice attacks, so it freezes solid when hit by Iron Bundle's blaster. Cue a caveman YouTube poop I hope people understand. I just remembered we're in Maryland. Yeah, I, I got that. I ended up getting that. Off. Just off screen, Slitherwing approaches, seeing Great Tusk as a fun next opponent. So Great Tusk begins to thaw out. While not fire type itself, Slitherwing is a paradox form of a particularly hot fire type, Volcarona. Right? Yeah. And Slitherwing can learn many fire type moves. It's even so hot. Wait, that it can? can't damage itself in the process. It can barely manage its own body. Heat. I didn't but know that. Really fight. Both get turned into roadkill by the bike. To be fair, I don't really use the paradox Pokemon. Or I didn't use the paradox Pokemon when I. Play the game. Long, ridiculous, stretchy legs, That's so sick. Finally escape from the water, and in being a hair metal band reference, it screams quietly while magnetically pulling in everything around it. Yo. The screams and bolts from the Terrarium's dome, as well as the Violet Paradox Pokemon. Only those fast enough, like Iron Bundle, or heavy enough, like Iron Boulder, can escape. Iron Leaves activates its lightsaber leaf blades and destroys Sandy Shocks before it's too late. Initiating growling sound effects. G R R R R R R R R R R R R R Good old text to speech programs before AI. Dog, it's so great. That was such a great joke. Against the psychic type Iron Swords trio, so flees and runs into the proto legendary beasts and holds out its hands like that one Jurassic World scene. But it lacks a third hand to stay safe. The Hell Divers Automaton March is heard emanating from the Iron Swords, who, in essentially being the opposite of the original Swords of Justice, which stand for liberty and justice for all democracy Americana stuff, makes this very fitting as they kind of stand opposed to all that now this for sure was a this is so great that maybe the anime will do when it gets to them they transform like transformers and combine like many a voltron or power rangers yeah paradox pokemon seen in the violet book which merges all three of them but two can play at that game. Oh, I hope that's a movie. decide to give it a try too and with a magical girly evolution effect they achieve nothing Actually, they can't actually do that. They are biological, but they can dream. The Iron Swords <laughs> charge the Proto Trio. Gouging Fire prepares its shield, so the swords change their targets to Walking Wake, defeating it and Raging Bolt, and more of the Terrarium's dome. Meanwhile, ah, oh, this is so leader, great, dude. Boom takes a punch and then uses Frenzy to gouging, <laughs> knocking Poridon and itself out in the process. Ah, oh, dude. Dome also. It, it was so, this was so Trapple well made. The man. Lands on the swords, separating and defeating them, and causing Iron Crowns. It went out like some bitches. On. I ain't gonna lie. Gouging fire cannot swim, but Walking Wick can run on water and perhaps even perfectly float when fainted. It's just a silly joke. So we reach the final <laughs> four and the ultimate showdown. Mirai Don, Iron Bundle, hey, Fluttermane, and Music Screamtail. though. 
I love this fight. We got Iron Bundle mouthing off. Dog, this fight was so epic. As the fastest one here, Fluttermane tries to spook Screamtail, which and I like that they use their abilities for this fight, which then messes with Mirai Dawn and Bundle's sensors, causing more misses and more bad mouthing. Bundle rockets up, but accidentally runs into the invisible Fluttermane. Then, using its extendable neck, plays Whack a Mole with Mirai Dawn. Dude, it's so, great. it's so great. It's so fucking great. Screamtail then disables Fluttermane's shadow ball and encores it a hilarious and terrible situation to be in mirai don gets pelted with snow <gasps> they say like they oh, wait, wait 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 let me go back let me go back let me go back if they say that is like a horrible situation to be in the amount of times i've done a nuzlocke and i've just like gotten this happen to me bro i've actually wanted to punch my desk because it's the worst situation to be in especially if it's your last move or your only move because you're forced to struggle you're forced to struggle in that point, and then you could potentially lose your Pokemon. Bro, it's so fucked. It's such a fucked up thing. Ball and on I feel I feel for Fluttermane right here. Miraidon gets pelted with snow, dodges, and then punches Iron Bundle like a rock'em sock'em robot and <laughs> Dude, it's the fact that I got so many of these references. All three of its opponents at once. And now I'm actually proud of myself that I got a lot of the references. Everyone all at once prepares a move. Thankfully, Fluttermane's encore has ended. The attacks all come out, and wait, wait, where's Fluttermane? Oh, it used Phantom Force, a move where it goes into another dimension to protect itself for a hey, while, hey. and then comes out for a big attack. Hey. It was safe from the three other attacks and finished hey. off the gang in the end. What a sneaky little trick! Gang shit! Now comes the big why with all this. As always, it's yeah. Not I need to know why. You could mathematically say these stats, types, and moves make X Pokemon the strongest of the bunch. That doesn't take into account their personality and demeanors which has a huge impact it also doesn't take into mm -hmm. account a battle royale setting or stats yeah. and things working differently in a non-turn based system but as yeah. always we don't just look at the games but the card game the anime and even manga but in this case terminal and i have now caught up with these battle royales uh -huh. there's not really much to go off of with these pokemon the anime mm -hmm. hasn't really reached them and they barely have cards and there's only been one championship with them too what's also tricky is we often look at how the pokemon stay and in the competitive meta game, which we yeah. still did here for sure, absolutely. But in limiting the battle to the Paradox Pokemon, it's difficult because there are so few of them. And when looking at that, their that's what makes the it meta, so much it's interesting. Always them versus all the other Pokemon, not just them versus other Paradoxes. For instance, uh -huh. Fluttermane is super good in the meta game, which yes. does contribute to why we showed it winning here. It was also one of the only two Paradox Pokemon used by the top eight VGC quarterfinal analysts and above being really six out of the eight teams but one of the big reasons it's so good in the video game meta is because it's particularly good against other pokemon common in the meta so how does it do against other paradox pokemon this is very interesting well, because so okay so i'm gonna go ahead and announce this so like this is actually a great time to announce this up to uh, announce my upcoming series if you guys don't know back in uh, uh sword and shield I did a, I did like one stream of my new series just to try it out, but I can officially announce that it will be coming back in two weeks. In two weeks, it'll be coming back as a live series. It is called, it is called the Master Quest series. And it's basically where you guys, you the viewers, particularly my members, will be sending me Pokemon teams to try out and try to win i'll be creating an entire channel in my discord server where you guys can send me vgc teams or teams that you guys think good in the meta and i will get those teams i will build them and i will put them into my game and we will go online and see how many wins we can get in the in the online battle so let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. Below, Are you guys excited? Should I try to come up with some rule sets for it? Should I come up with some themes or a wheel or something? What things could I implement, implement to make that series like so, fun, so much more fun and engaging? Let me know in the comment section down below because it's one of the few community series that I've ever done and it's one of many that I want to do. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Let's get back, let's get back into the video. 
okay, I suppose. But there's less. The point of what I was saying is that I don't know much about competitors. Against Miraidon and Koraidon, those poor sandwich-loving dragons gotta fight this ghost fairy. That is an extremely good type combination. It is. It Close. really is. Fluttermane is one of the most threatening wall breakers in Ubers, thanks to its incredibly powerful stab combination. Yeah. Near unrivaled speed that is boosted further under sun, good coverage options, and great defensive typing. And on top of the meta, That's it's insane. very trickstery in nature, mischievous, and being able to fly, go invisible, and float through walls, and being relatively small, it has a lot of inherent advantages. Advantages over I mean, the like, when they break it down the like this, I can understand game, why Fluttermane won, for sure. Removes its opponent's abilities, like what? Midnight Fluttering, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's active Pokemon has no abilities except for Midnight Fluttering. And this is legal? This is legal! Wait a minute! Hold up! I need somebody who plays the TCG in the comment section to answer this. Is there a banned limited list like Yu-Gi-Oh has for the TCG? Because what the fuck is this? This is legal? Bro, what the fuck? How sneaky and powerful. It's no wonder that in the games it is uber tier, the highest, aside from those so stupidly good they're just blanket banned. And it's in this tier that we also find Miraidon and Iron Bundle. Koraidon too, but its perceived alpha cocky attitude most fighting types have, along with other disadvantages, leads it to not being in our final four. I mean, dragon right. fighting, that is Fluttermane's dream opponent. Not yeah, to mention Koraidon's main damaging move in the meta flare blitz damages itself fine for one-on-one -on -one fights but not very good not good yeah it's not, yeah. In a battle royale situation plus compared to koraidon miraidon has a lot more fan favor outside the meta being an actual it, bike yeah it's no it, wonder it it's does. in pokemon unite now too plus its electric typing would particularly help it against the other future paradoxes being able to short circuit them when looking at it from an anime like i will say that. like i'm gonna pause it again really quick yeah sorry i keep pausing but I'm not going to lie, even though I love the warm colored games, I was very close. I was this close to getting Violet over Scarlet because, yeah, I kind of like Moridon over Coridon. The only thing Coridon has going for him is that it's a red Pokemon. That's pretty much it. No, I really need to stop basing my decisions of what Pokemon game to play off the color. Starting to think that. Starting to think I have a problem. Lore perspective. But then, why did Miraidon not win? Well, in the meta, it's super good because of its particularly high speed and access to U-turn. But Iron Bundle is faster, and U-turn is useless in a free-for-all royale setting. But speaking it actually of bundle, is, yeah. it's ice water type. The ice being super effective against Miraidon's dragon, though Miraidon's electric the is good against being bundle's stronger water. Against it. But Bundle that's that's actually makes a great rival. Bundle is known to one hit KO Miraidon and Koraidon and more. Plus, in our Wait, really? environment, a blueberry academy that floods, its typing gives it an advantage here, too. Oh, that's also true, yeah. Plus, consider the rule of cool, or in its case, I guess the the gilly of silly. Iron Bundle is very much the silliest paradox Pokemon, giving it some comedic relief defensive options. It survives because it's funnier if it does that. But that all said, <laughs> why is Screamtail in the top four? Screamtail is NU to PU tier in the meta, never used or Oh, that's amazing. Used, I've never thought about perfectly that. Perfectly useless. AKA PU stinky. It's not particularly noteworthy in the metagame at all. For everything it does, there are other Pokemon who do it better. So nobody uses it in competitive teams, but it's here because of the context outside the games. Jigglypuff is already a particularly beefy poof due to lots of Smash Bros and anime shenanigans, and yeah. Screamtail is even tougher. It's a billion-year-old it? squishy tank, and it's loud. Acoustic weapons are really just powerful. 
powerful speakers that send insanely loud and or high slash low frequency sounds to take down drones and computer systems. So right. In lore, Screamtail has the perfect counter to half of the combatants in the battle royale. Oh, well, yeah, in reality, yeah, that greatly. makes sense. Specifically, a resonant sound at 140 decibels, which it can more than do, messes with gyroscopes, which would cause any drone or robot that uses them, which is most if not all, to suddenly become confused about which way is up. Right. confusion and dizziness and missitude. That is a huge boon for our punk balloon. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. In a battle royale sorting, like, Screamtail actually is, like, on the top eight like up there. I mentioned, used by five of the top eight champions. So why didn't it make it into the top four? Well, its cards aren't particularly noteworthy. Amp you very right. much? <laughs> really? That's not even a pun. In the video games, Hans is a tank and a strong physical wall breaker. <laughs> Literally, uh, it's very fitting of a sumo wrestler. It's good in the games because it happens to work as a good counter to other non paradoxes. But in a battle right. of speedy finalists, it really hurts. It's like one of the, the slowest, slowest, right? Paradox. Yeah. Especially in a more anime esque royale setting where being fast, small, or high in the air. See, I'm picking up on this. I'm picking up on a lot of this. I'm actually noting like some of the so stuff. What about the proto beasts and in terms swords. of like stats and well, stuff for VGC. While their VGC. stat totals are significantly higher than the other paradoxes, there's not much going for them, actually. None are particularly meta, and aside from a few being kinda big and heavy, none have things that help them much against the others. They are right. all slow compared to the final four, are either a dragon type, which is a disadvantage here, right. or are psychic type, which is a bit of a disadvantage here. But also, yeah. those three are robots, which against Screamtail and Miraidon is a big disadvantage. Yeah. So, I think all in all, while you could argue any of these four could have won, which is why we decided to have the final climactic battle be between the four of them. I think I can stand by the idea that Fluttermane would Fluttermane win. definitely would win in a situation. Especially because it can just hide, you know? It's a really, really good killer. It's weak in its defenses, but in this particular setting, its defenses are going invisible or hiding in another dimension. So yeah, I'm confident yeah, to like Fluttermane would well, win the <clears throat> battle. Well, not even that, too. Like, when you think about it, right? So, Fluttermane is Ghost Fairy, right? So, the only Pokemon out of all four, uh, out of the other three finalists that could actually touch it is Iron Bundle. But well, Iron Bundle is so preoccupied with Moridon in his fight that it's not even focused on the one Pokemon that could be, like, a threat and win the competition. Like, if Iron Bundle takes out Fluttermane in this fight, Iron Bundle actually wins. Or actually, maybe Screamtail wins. Maybe Screamtail wins. But Screamtail can't even touch Iron Bundle, or not Iron Bundle, Fluttermane. Because it's a normal type. Like, I guess you can use, like, psychic type moves against it. But it's like Loxton said, you can literally, like, disappear into another dimension and avoid the attack. The only attack that it got hit by was disabled. Like, dude, this mod is insane. Royale, with these three and maybe the rest of them on this list having a decent chance too. But hey, what was your favorite moment in the battle? Wait, was that a percentile of who could win? So Fluttermane was at 16%, Maridon was at 16%, Screamtail was at 15%, Iron Bundle was at 14%. Wow. Decent chance too. But hey, what was your favorite moment in the battle? Let me know down below. The climactic you want to know all The climactic end was my favorite part. That was so cool. Pokemon, that and maybe the of videos. The now. Paradox so for watching. The Paradox for Musketeers like Pokemon knowledge using together stuff and never stop using your noggin. Yo. Nah, that was actually really cool and really I can see why you guys wanted me to react to that. That was really cool. I like that. I loved every bit of that video. Yo, if you guys want me to react to the the explain the explanation video of like the paradox Pokemon for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm totally down to do so. Um stick around, my dudes, because I'm trying to find a way to implement reaction videos into our upload schedule at least once a week maybe twice a week if we get enough support on them let me know in the comment section down below what videos you guys would like to see but with that said i'm gonna wrap it up right here 
If you guys enjoyed my reaction to this video, be sure to hit that like button, share it out with your family and friends, and subscribe to the channel if you're new because it's greatly appreciated and I will love you for it. And remember, we're on the road to 10K subs by the end of the year and with your help, I know we can do it. And when we hit that goal, I'll be dying my hair pink, ombre pink, and getting myself my very first tattoo. So if that's something you wanna see, make sure you get that notification bell on so you don't miss out on any of my videos or any of my live streams. Make sure you subscribe to my second and third channel because content is on the way. And make sure you join my Discord server and follow me on all of my socials. The links are in the description down below. But with that said, I'm gonna get up out. I'm Jerry Blaze, gonna be infamous in everything you do. I love you 2000 and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.